please stand, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. I see a lot of nice faces here. We're going to change the agenda up a little bit so the matter that you're here to, to, to be heard on will be heard before as it appears on the agenda. Um, before the, this um, general meeting, um, the board met in executive session. We had a couple of uh, litigation matters to review, one being the homeowner and um, our sewer project and then the other how to proceed with funding with our, with our sewer projects. We also had a personnel discussion on a, an analyst position that we'll be advertising. Um, anything else that we dealt with? No, that was okay. it. Okay. Um, any visitors or public comment not having to do with the zoning of uh, this, this property? Hearing and seeing none, moving on. The next meeting of the, this Board of Supervisors is Tuesday, March 21st at 7 p.m. The Bicentennial Committee will meet on Tuesday, March 21st at 4 p.m. And let me extend an invitation to all of you to participate in our upcoming Bicentennial for 2018. The committee is all in force and we're planning things and anyone, anyone in this room um, is welcome to that committee and you're all welcome to participate. So that would be Tuesday, March 21st at 4 p.m. 2018 will be 200 years old. So. Start the, start the buzz because it's going to be happening. You're going to see a lot of a lot of events this year marking um, the 2018 celebration. Daylight savings time, wahoo, is March 12th. Um, set your clocks ahead one hour. We all get to sleep in. Um, and it's a good time also to replace the batteries in your smoke detectors. Washington, D.C. Cherry Blossom trip is uh, April 1st. It's $50 a person. You can sign up for this trip by going to our, we our website, DoylestownRec.com. The Environmental Advisory Council is holding a magnet fundraiser. We have magnets. Where are they? Out front. Out front. $5. Um, movie and ski tickets, a really good bargain. If you go to the Barn Cinema or Regal, you can save a lot of money by buying your movie tickets here and ski tickets. And you contact our administrative offices out front anytime during the day. And today is the deadline for nominating someone for the Unsung Hero Award. That is someone from this community, Doylestown Township member, who does things just to do them, not for any kind of reward or recognition or uh, resume building, but someone who works hard for this community, doesn't have to work for the township, doesn't have to be a volunteer in the township, that needs to be recognized even though he or she would not want to be recognized. So we, we do that for our township residents. All right. Um, next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes for the March, uh, February 21st, 2017 meeting. Everyone had a chance to see the minutes, review the minutes? Yes. Any uh, changes, corrections? <laughs> Hearing none. Approved. Thank Second. you. All in favor? Abstain. Aye. Aye. One abstention. Thank you. Um, I'd like to make note that um, Ms. Mannion is not here today because she was one of five people from the, com from the country being invited to spend some time with uh, President Trump today at 1 o'clock um, with her expertise on Veterans Affairs. So um, good for Ms. Mannion, good for the Travis Mannion Foundation, and uh, she was meeting with the President along with four other individuals from, from this country. So good for her. She can't be here tonight, and that's why I'm noting her absence for that reason. We told her that wasn't a really good excuse, but <laughs> she said she was going to be there anyway. So, Okay, now... Let's go to the public hearing regarding the Doylestown Township change of zoning on the municipal parcels lot. Now you've got some information out there. We're changing it for you, so we'll get you out of here real soon. Uh, if I may, as you know, the township's going to be embarking on some improvements to this property, which is this building and the recreation center in the back, and it required some adjustments to how this property is zoned, and it's zoned institutional now. Um, the thought was from the administration that they would just zone all of the properties owned by the township in this vicinity institutional because it's a park, whatever, they're all institutional uses. So that proposal was advertised, but you're right. There are certain unintended consequences to doing that, even though the township has no interest in doing any of the things that may have caused you to be here today, there are certainly unintended consequences. So I think uh, based upon my conversation with Terry Clemens, who was engaged by one of the adjoining 
uh, housing developments, as well as conversations that have come from you folks to the Township Administration, I believe the Board's prepared tonight to reject the ordinance so that there is no rezoning of the large parcels of land. I will tell you, however, that in the future there probably will be another hearing on another advertisement, but it will probably just increase the size of this parcel by an acre or two in zoning and institutional. So it just covers the basic elements of this particular structure and this particular complex. So there will be a future ordinance, but it will be limited to an area right around here so that the impervious surface ratios and other things that are needed for the reconstruction of, of this building and other facilities can be accomplished without having to go to the Zoning Hearing Board. So it would be my recommendation, assuming the Board doesn't disagree, that the ordinance scheduled for tonight, that it be today, be rejected and concluded and ended without any change of zoning for any of the parcels that were affected. The chair will entertain such a motion. So moved. Second? Second. Second by Mr. Snyder. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And just so you know, we are rebuilding. We're not going to build any bigger than we have, but for, for impervious reasons, we have to take some more land around us, but it's not going to impinge on any of the parkland, your developments, your homes, anything like that. Everything's going to stay the same. Believe me. Everything's going to stay the same. So we're, it's unfortunate that you had this upset, but and we didn't intend that, so that's, we took it away. So just so you know, everything's okay. I see a question. Ma'am, you have to take the microphone and identify yourself. <coughs> I hear in my mouth. Hi, my name's Lisa Curran. So the, the tax mass... TAC TMPs that we're talking about are currently zoned R1s and R2s. You were thinking institutional. Is there a way that it can be considered to be preserved as open space so we don't run into this conflict in the future? Well, certain elements of that are already restricted by virtue of the fact that they were acquired by the township as part of a subdivision process like the lands around Doylestown Station and Morgan Hill were acquired as part of approved plans that said they were to be open space, so they can't be changed. But obviously the board will be addressing that in the future. And also I believe there's some thought that perhaps we want to develop an alternative classification like parkland or some other zoning classification that would better fit the parkland. So we will be working on that. Parkland is going to stay parkland. That's it. That's what we do here. We keep our parks open and free from any encroachment. Any other questions about this? Sir, please take the microphone. Yeah, uh, I can speak out. No, no, you no. can't because we're televised live. And, and the people in the back there who do it are yell will yell at me. Hi, my name is Brad Merck. Um, uh, talk, to, talk into the mic. Uh, my name is Brad Merck. And uh, I wanted to... To, to ask, is there a map available that we can look into it, what uh, areas we are even talking about? It's just only a general thing that it's somewhere around here, but uh, what are the specifics? If you ask the township manager, she can provide you with a map. Thank you. Anything else? All right, we're done with any. No, we're done with this issue. You're all welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. But if you wanted to leave, <laughs> you may leave now. Thank, thank you for coming, and don't forget about our bicentennial. <laughs> Bye, Terry. Hey, Terry. Terry, that's the quickest buck you earned. Yeah, really. <laughs> All right, let's see. Where are we? I'm going to go. You know, you said you'd like to have day meeting, but the senior's not where you got them. All right, we're going to return to our agenda. Yes, sir. Please take the microphone. I'm you sorry, go you've got to go to the microphone. Oh, Elaine. Oh, Elaine, I'm sorry. Maybe we can take the microphone to you.
Wait. Mr. John has a microphone for you. So I hit it. My one question is about access roads. I know there is open space, and I'm thinking one area where you could create a road coming back from the building out to Turk Road. Are you considering any more access roads? We, no, not not that I know. Not any access there. Um, the county does have some discussion right now. They received a grant potentially for trail. Yeah. Trails are right. Access trail, no roads. roads. Yeah. Trail. Just and trails. Coming through the open space that we acquired from your property. Yeah, okay. Yep. But no roads. Okay. It's good Thank to you. see you. That was Elaine Carlson. I'm sorry. It's okay. All right. All right, so we have a dog park resignation. Janet, um, Severides, is there a motion to accept a resignation from the dog park? I'll make that motion. Is second. There a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And there's a motion from um, Mr. Herb Hebert to um, for his resignation. Is there a motion to accept? Move to approve. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. There's a, an email. Well, there's a request for um, Ms. Adamski to join the park board. I mean, the dog park board. Um, she is a current dog park member. She's township resident, and the uh, dog park committee recommends that she be appointed. Is there a motion to I'll appoint? Make that motion. Yes. Thank second. you. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All in favor of Margie Adamski? Aye. 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 And then Christy Leferb would be the uh, appointee from the borough for the dog park committee, and um, the dog park committee has asked us to approve her appointment from the board, from the board of supervisors' position, pending her approval from the borough council. It's a motion. Make that motion. Okay. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you for that bit of business. Um, we've got a, a note from Mr. Hammerstein indicating that he's applied for a grant for the museum. That is correct. Um, and as part of the application that he'll be making to the state, um, they have to identify where the host municipality is located for the um, facility, and we will be identified. Okay. And we'll do whatever we have to do to help him with that mm -hmm. application. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. All right, there was another um, public hearing scheduled for tonight, the proposed amendment to our floodplain ordinance. If I may, uh, you'll recall about two years ago, this board adopted a floodplain ordinance that was precipitated by direction from FEMA that you had to do this. Well, the township, as every other township in Bucks County, adopted the appropriate ordinance, and then FEMA decided they wanted to make some changes to the to their model ordinance that they want everyone to adopt. So. At a prior meeting, the board authorized the advertisement of the ordinance to reflect those changes to the prior ordinance, which has been duly accomplished. Copies were sent to your planning commission, to the Bucks County Planning Commission, I guess, and were advertised at the uh, Law Library as well as uh, in the Intelligence. So it's ready for you to conduct a public hearing. I spoke, Judy can give you an idea of what those changes are. They're not significant, but they are changes. Hello. Hello. Um, you have the draft ordinance in front of you, or at least in your packet. They're mostly administrative changes. One is just changing the um, the basic premise that it says you can't get a permit without the floodplain administrator. There was just subtle language change required by FEMA in that. A couple changes deal with the change in phrase from repetitive loss to cumulative substantial damage. It means the same thing, but it was a big deal to FEMA, so... We're doing it. And the other part was just talking about accessory buildings in the floor area for an accessory structure in the floodplain can't exceed 600 square feet. And the final one of any substance at all is stating that if something was built prior to the date of enactment of this ordinance, they still have to follow the floodplain regulations that were in effect at the time that they were built and permitted. That's it in a nutshell. Okay, well, thank you. We need to conduct a public hearing, obviously. Uh, any members have any There's questions or comments about the no, changes? No, no. Got one more comment. Please. This right. ordinance does change the floodplain maps. Oh, I'm sorry. It, uh, it basically, I believe the main watershed that gets changed is the Cooks Run. 
so it does change the floodplain. They restudied certain uh, streams within the Chamonix Creek and uh, in Dorstown Township they will be ch- yeah. changing. So it expands the, the yeah. reach of the floodplain zone? In certain the, areas, yeah. yes. And I think for the most part it does. In some areas it may narrow it a bit, it, but I think for the most part it does. It shrunk in a couple, it expanded in a few others, and this was the one that we received notification of right about the time that you were adopting the prior ordinance as you were mandated to do so. We received notification they were redoing it again, so they augmented it with additional information. Is there any impact on any existing structures? Probably. There probably is, but the existing structures have the right to remain. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. They'll becoming they'll become nonconformities. Okay, great. All right. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions on the board? Any right. questions from the public? Comments? Concerns? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the amended ordinance? Move to approve. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much, Ms. Stern Goldstein. All right, I lost my agenda. Oh, here it is. Okay, um, reports from the. Did I get I have nothing that I haven't already said so far tonight. (laughs) Township engineer? Nothing this evening. Chief? Nothing to report. Really? All right. Good, thank you. All right, Director of Operations, already up to the podium. Good afternoon. You have uh, three proposals in front of you, or recommendations for approval, three proposals for the construction of the municipal complex. Uh, All right, right, Mr. Tomko, um, who makes up the building committee who reviewed all these um, applications? You? Members of the building committee are yourself, Mr. Schneider. Rick Shea. uh, Rick Shea, Stephanie Mason, Township Manager, myself. Mr. John um, is primarily the yeah. core of our group. Building committee received, um, I'm going to just make sure I'm going in the proper order, yeah, interior design. Sure, yeah. Interior design. We received five proposals for interior designers. Uh, we conducted interviews. The building committee conducted interviews, and basically we're making a recommendation uh, to you tonight for the approval of a proposal for the Administrative Police Building and Parker Rex Activity Center totaling $20,275 to interior design space of Bedminster, Pennsylvania. To interior space and design of Bedminster um, for the amount of $28,275 is our motion to approve. I'd like to make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then uh, for construction management professional, this is actually not a construction management agreement. Presumably he functions more as a... Uh, uh, yeah, that's technically as, a, as an owner's representative um, for this, but, you know, yeah, we, we have um, kind of call it a construction management, but it's not technically a construction management service. We, so. we decided, the committee is, committee's recommendation that we do not hire a construction manager. We don't need someone to be sitting here all day long every day to mm-hmm. see what's going on. We think we have the talent and the skill on site to do that, and that this is a, a far less um, costly yeah. costly um, um, way of doing it, and I, we're going to get the same result. Uh, we're very impressed with uh, J.D. Bravo Company. So I would recommend to the board that they be uh, approved as our owner's representative. Great. I'd like to make that motion. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Uh, J.D. Bravo. Uh, That contract totals $187,640. For your information, a construction management um, contract would be uh, an additional $100,000 more. Correct. Okay. I'm sorry. Carry on. That's okay. The third that you have in front of you is uh, for a proposal from Pine Run Construction for our fuel tank um, fuel station, removal of the existing tanks and remediation, and construction of new tanks above ground uh, at the rear of uh, this this building back here. Um, That total is an amount of $164,400. Uh, Pine Run is a CoStar's approved company, so we and we've also worked with Pine Run before. They inspect and maintain our tank and our fuel system currently, so we're recommending uh, to move forward with that proposal as well. There's a motion to approve Pine Run construction for the uh, fuel tank removal, so remediation, and construction. I'll, I'll second it with a comment. So we don't need, I have no obligation, and no desire to bid it. You're just going to go with the Pine Run. Correct. 
That contract right. total is $164,400. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Tomko. Hey, that's it. Thank you. All right. Um, Township Manager. Um, this evening, Ken Wallace, our finance um, director, is here. And in your packet, you have information regarding um, sort of how we ended the actuals on December 31st, 16. We're undergoing our audit right now. Um, the auditors have been out a few times already. And we want to provide, uh, we've been working with the Ways and Means Committee. Um, we do have a um, PowerPoint presentation as well. And um, Ken will be giving it, but Brenda, um, Chairman of the Ways and Means, if you want to, is right in the back. Um, do you want to come up forward, or you're okay back there? Thank it's you. It's laryngitis, I think. <coughs> yeah, just, just stay back stay there. <laughs> Thank you, Ed, for the light. <coughs> Thank you for being here, Brenda. Joe's here, Joe. Joe. Oh, Joe. Joe. Joe Joe's back he? there. I don't see him. Hi, Joe. Oh, there he is. He's blending in with his shirt to the thing back there. Our Ways and Means Committee are a valuable group of volunteers from the township who assist the township finance director in compiling our budget and so many other things. So thank you. They do a wonderful job guiding us yes, through the waters of the financial world. Um, if we can move on to the next um, slide. This uh, slide I wanted to uh, go over with you folks is that it shows that uh, it's an actual actual to uh, budget um, you know um, variance as far as the results for 2016 and um, the um, the overall picture of this is a is a four million dollar you know positive uh, movement for 2016 and some of these are the uh, details that are in the uh, with within the uh, within the uh, reports. Um, first of all, the real estate transfer tax was uh, up uh, $252,000. We had uh, a very strong year in Doylestown Township for transfer taxes. Uh, we finished up with uh, around $700,000 uh, for the total year. Um, we had um, an unprecedented uh, uh, transfer tax come in in December, which is usually a, uh, a slow month, and uh, we got... Uh, from the county, seventy thousand dollars. So I took a look back at the the previous years, and we've never received seventy thousand dollars in in December. So that's this is the type of year we had as far as transfer taxes were concerned in the township. Uh, building permits, um, building permits were flat for the entire year. We uh, forecasted that uh, that they would come in around one hundred forty thousand um, dollars. We had another, um, you know, a movement in December, in which a, uh, a developer on Lower State Road sent uh, the township uh, building permits totaling about $180,000. So we basically we basically doubled our build, our building permits throughout the, throughout the year. Um, Insurance and storm reimbursements uh, totaled up to $182,000, and that was uh, a point that we got reimbursed from the Commonwealth as far as our storm damage uh, back uh, in January of uh, 2016, and we got about $82,000. We also received insurance reimbursements of over $61,000, uh, in which we had damages done to our traffic signals and things like that, and we, we uh, re got reimbursed uh, from, the, uh, from the insurance company. Then our, LS, our LST and EIT taxes for the year were also strong. We, we finished up around $600,000 for the local services tax. And for the first time, you know, we finished up over $4 million in, in earned income tax uh, for the year. So we had a very good, strong fourth quarter. We received those uh, taxes in January and February of this year, and uh, we, uh, we uh, adjusted them back to uh, uh, 2016 because there were 2016 receipts. Um, going down to the expenses, um, you know, as far as the capital projects were concerned, uh, our capital projects came in a load under budget as far as the Century Trail. Uh, the bridge design uh, for 2016 came under budget, the Arley Grant, and the Neshaminy Greenway. Most of all, too, is that our, we had a warm winter. So the warm winter correlated into 
less salt, no. less materials used, no overtime, no overtime, labor costs. And that translated, you know, throughout the, the state liquid fuels uh, budget as far as those items were concerned. And our contracted snow removal services were, were way down, too, because of the warm winter. Um, we had uh, staffing, we had short staffing as far as in our water department and our police department. Uh, we had um, uh, our police department as far as we had a retirement as of 12-31-15. We had a new hire. Uh, they came aboard and then they uh, termed their uh, employment and then uh, we we didn't hire an additional officer until late in the year so there was savings correlated with that uh, with the uh, with the police department chief anticipates making that up in 2017 uh, I would imagine yes I would imagine and also too is that uh, not only did we have a warm winter but our fuel costs across the board for the township were, were way down you know we were paying you know, uh, in the mid one one fifty, one seventy five per gallon, as far as uh, uh, fuel and, and diesel fuel is concerned. And then at the beginning of the year, um, Ed and I took a look at the uh, the fund balance as of twelve thirty one fifteen, and you know we had a, a two million dollar uh, movement as far as the uh, the beginning balance as far as. Uh, the, starting the, uh, the year. Um, the two million dollars does contain, you know, we can talk about fund balance until about nine o'clock tonight, but, uh, you know, the, the fund balance had some assets uh, in within that uh, in that amount, so, but it was mostly a, a cash movement. Okay. So, so Ken, these variances that you reported here for revenue and expenses. Mm -hmm. This is comparing the year-end 2016 to the 2016 budget that was approved at the end of, in December of 2015. That's correct. That's, okay. That's correct. And, and throughout the year, you're always revising it, but this is the accumulation of all those net, all those changes. That's correct. Okay. Yes. If we can move to the uh, revenue uh, slide, please. This just shows you a little bit of a detail as far as the <coughs> adopted budget versus the preliminary final. And, uh, you know, the preliminary final shows that uh, we took in uh, a little over $13 million as far as our, our revenue is concerned. Now, the adopted budget is, as you said, uh, Supervisor Snyder, that uh, it came from the uh, adopted budget uh, back in 2015. So there's uh, some details uh, there that, uh, you know, that you can look at. If we could go on to the expense side. There you go. Here again is, uh, you know, the, the detail behind, you know, my summary page at the beginning showing that uh, our adopted budget was uh, a little over, you know, close to $13.2 million, and we came in a, a million dollars less at $12.2 million. And then there's the, uh, the, 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 the ex explanations for our short staffing, uh, professional fees, light snow removal costs, and things like that. So I covered it in my summary. Now, um, we uh, can you take a look at um, your final? Well, th let's look at the uh, fund balance page. Thank you. You started off with the uh, $6.2 million. You took in revenues a little over 13. Your expenses were a little over 12, too. Your net income is coming in at $800,000, and your ending fund balance is a little over uh, $7 million which is about a million dollars up from where we were looking at back in October of 2016, because the fund balance at that time was projected to come in at uh, a little over $6 million. Good. Um, we did put together three slides for you. If we could go to two, uh, the one slide for 2017. Uh, yes, there it is. Now here you see that we have a 2016 preliminary final of you know the 13 million dollars. Then we have the 2017 adopted budget of 23 million dollars, which includes your your uh, your bond you know expenses and proceeds. And then this will all be vetted out in the um, upcoming um, budget uh, workshops 
that uh, we're going to be conducting in April, May, June, July. If we can move to the next uh, expense slide. Thank you. And it's the same thing here, the 2016 preliminary final. We expended $12.2 million, and our adopted budget for 2017 is, the, is $24 million, which includes the bond proceeds and expenses for the new building. And then the final page is the financial uh, report fund balance. As you see that uh, on the previous page, you had a $7 million fund balance, which is the beginning fund balance for 2017. And then with the revenues and expenditures, you're going to be consuming about uh, $452,000 in the upcoming uh, budget year. Okay. Uh, like I said, we had a very, very good year in 2016. Um, we do have some challenges ahead. Uh, as far as the township is concerned, um, we don't know where, it, uh, where uh, stormwater is going to be going as far as uh, unfunded mandates concerning that. Uh, we do have a uh, contract to uh, negotiate in 2018 as far as the uh, police department is concerned. So uh, that's all I have uh, for you right now. Do you have any questions? No, good job. Thank you. Yeah, I have okay. no questions. I mean, okay, great. Just, just one comment. I mean, you look at that 2016 our revenues were greater than our expenses, mm -hmm. which Yay. is a significant step. So that was it was a great job by the township to make those reductions where they were and get that revenue in. It was a great job. So Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, we have a good team here. Yeah. And the board will note our first 2017 budget meeting is April 18th at 4 o'clock. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. thank you very much for your time. Discussion. Yeah. Thank you, Ken. We'll see you then. Right. Any anything from Brenda? Brenda, do you want to croak out anything else? I just want to comment uh, as well about <clears throat> how well we've been working together and that 2016 was an excellent year for the township. Um, hitting the $4 million mark on EIT is a benchmark. Um, and while we're looking ahead at consuming some of our fund balance next year, perhaps we'll be so fortunate as to have another year um, where everything's so positive and we won't need to do that. But thank you to Stephanie and to Ken and uh, the Board of Supervisors. Thank you, Brenda, for your service. <laughs> Feel better. All right, moving on to um, supervisors' comments and remarks. I'm going to start because um, I, I want to get Resolution 1363 out of the way. In 2007, um, prior board, um, created and passed a resolution 1363 developing and adopting our naming policy for park amenities and other township facilities. Um, um, as we're developing our plan for administrative buildings and rec centers and, and even the naming of the amphitheater, we're, we're inconsistent with our naming policy. So I would like to <coughs> offer an amendment to the policy and that is, would be found on, um, this is not, the one I had. We found on um, page three, bullet item, second from the last, that says, no park or recreation facility shall be named to memorialize a living person. I, I would recommend that we remo remove that so that we can, uh, like the amphitheater in Covenant Park, obviously mm -hmm. Covenant Park is named, um, is, is the name on the amphitheater, and this is, that naming is actually contrary to this, this criteria. Um, so I would recommend we remove it, remove that, um, uh, put that into a, a motion to uh, amend the resolution. Um, is there a second to that? There's a second. Thank you. Um, so the, the solicitor will offer uh, an amendment to the next I'll, meeting. I'll prepare for your signature once you proceed. Thank you. Um, all in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. Thank you. That cleans that up a little bit. Yep. Um, do you have anything, Sean? I do not. Thank you. Ken? Nope, not tonight. Rick? Oh, boy. Yeah, well, since You're I've on, got Rick. that opportunity, I'll, I'll talk as long as I can. Um, <laughs> I had DTMA meeting, which was great. I mean, things are just exploding, and, and I think this board has seen a lot of the ventures are getting into. Acronym. Uh, okay. Acronym. 
Doylestown Township Municipal Authority, our water department, not ours, but the township's water department that supplies water to many of our residents and other areas. But also, you may have seen the New Britain Knoll property demolished, and they're starting to do serious development down there. And the DTMA is heavily involved in that and gives us an opportunity to expand through New Britain. So that's a big plus. The other meeting was the one I want to talk about is a planning commission meeting. And we had a presentation by the Cross Keys Planning Commission from Bucks County. And they did a great job. I mean, they did a lot of research, a lot of homework. They talked about different avenues to alleviate the traffic in Cross Keys. If you've driven there recently, you may have run into some issues up in that area. So they've done a lot of work and a lot of homework in that area. However, the focus turned on one particular area, and that was that traffic light at 313 and Old Easton Road. You know, it's Easton Road, Swamp Road, 313, and Old Easton Road, and that mess that you, if you haven't been stopped in it, then you haven't been there recently. It's a mess. The residents from the borough and the township had a lot of legitimate questions. They came in with great facts that, unfortunately, that weren't disputed by the Bucks County Planning Commission, which was a little bit disappointing as far as accidents, et cetera. So they've got to do a little better job on that, the Bucks County Planning Commission. And the residents had some good suggestions. And, again, I was disappointed in the answer being, well, PennDOT's not crazy about that. PennDOT's not interested in this. And, I mean, PennDOT works for us. And if we see something that's going to work better, then we'll get to PennDOT and we'll get the right people to PennDOT. I mean, that intersection, that area is the way it is because of PennDOT over the years. So you would think they'd be a little bit more understanding and flexible. So we'll work more on that. And the other issue was maybe the timing of the traffic lights at that triangle where, you know, you get a green. As soon as you make the turn, it turns red for you, and then the other cars are going green. But when they – so I'm suggesting without a lot of effort of just maybe taking a look with the – there's three municipalities there, I believe, Plumstead, Buckingham, or the borough. The borough and Buckingham and us. Borough, Buckingham and us. And maybe just have a cursory conversation about looking at the timing and the capacity there. As the Bucks County Planning Commission basically said, well, if it's a problem, go fix it. You know, that's – they weren't really looking at it in their long-term plan, which, again, was disappointing. So I would like to get a consensus if we can have Dave, our old traffic expert, who is now our new director of operations, to just take a cursory look at it with Stephanie and call the other two communities and see if we can't solve that conundrum or traffic jam. Rick, we actually hold the permit, so our name's first on the permit, so we'll take the lead on that and review the permit, the timings, make sure everything's – I think you have consensus from the board to proceed that way. Thank you. The problems are solved. That's all I have. Thank you. All right, next item on the – no unfinished business? No. Pine Run Development Agreement. The board will recall that a month or so ago you approved the – final plans of Pine Run who are going to be demolishing their community hub building and replacing it with a new building. Uh, they have met the conditions of your approval and now they've submitted for your consideration development agreement. It may be here, it may not be, but I would request the board authorize its signature uh, by the <coughs> board chair when it's received. It meets my approval and it has been drawn to reflect the terms and conditions of the approval that occurred uh, about a month or so ago. All right, is there a motion? To I'll make that motion. Second that. To approve the authorization of the Pine Run Development Signature, yeah, execution. Received. Thank yes. you. Um, motion first and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, and Mr. Colello will be attending the groundbreaking on March 14th. Thank you very much for representing the township at that event. My pleasure. All right, next item on the agenda, Tabor sketch plan. The board should understand that sketch plans are just Sketch plans. the developer's request to come in and explain what they have in mind 
board will not be asked to make any approvals or do anything else like that other than to provide comments. So, Mr. Shandor. Good evening. Good afternoon. I'm not used to coming to a meeting. Don't talk I'm unless not... you got your face on the microphone, Chris. I'm not used to talking in a meeting unless it's daylight out or unless it's not daylight out. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Welcome. Thank you very much. Chris Shandor, CEO, Pennsgrant Corporation. Hi, With me right. tonight, Chris Del Plato, who's our president. Um, also have with us two other gentlemen professionals that we've hired to begin to take a look at what we might do with the remaining parcel of Tabor uh, Children's Services, now known as Tabor Children's Services. Did I Services. see Mr. Shandor come in also? Mrs. Shandor is back Hello, there, yes. Mrs. Shandor. Actually, Welcome. Mrs. Shandor is back there, and the gentleman next to Mrs. Shandor is Mr. Rabb. Uh, Stephen Rabb and uh, Mr. Fred Beans would be here tonight, but Mr. Beans is at a doctor's appointment. So, and as he says, the older he gets, the more he needs to go to doctors. It's true of everybody, Chris. Um, true, of everybody. true with all of us. I also have with me tonight um, Chris Burkett. Chris is a registered landscape architect, registered planner, and also a registered uh, professional engineer with the Kennett Square office of Gilmore and Associates. Um, with me also is uh, Doug Hersenberg. Doug is a registered architect with the Bernardin firm, headquartered in uh, Kennett also, with offices, what, in Philadelphia and Wilmington, Delaware, I guess. Um, as short as I can, but it is somewhat lengthy. Uh, we Shorter have, than. Well, I'll, I'll do my best to make it short because I know we're the last item on here. It's a sketch plan. Yeah, it is a sketch plan. Just a little bit of history. Obviously, the uh, parcel across the street. Thank you very much. Glad to get that. Uh, the parcel across the street was purchased by us from Oh, I mean, I don't know that the public can see it. Put it on the other side of Mr. Shandor, I think it would be. We can face this any way you want it faced, any, uh, any of you folks, or maybe many of you here who live nearby. Um, we purchased the property across the street back in 1999 or 2000, about 20-some-odd acres, a good deal of which was not developable. It's in the floodplain or in the uh, woods, steep slopes, et cetera. Built the uh, Doylestown Commerce Center upon it. Um, the remaining acreage there is about 19 acres, 17 or 18 of it will probably be usable one way or the other. And uh, uh, without wasting your time, are you is everybody pretty familiar with what is on that property today so that I don't have to go through that? I mean, the house was built in about 1879. The carriage house was built in about 1886, which is today the was a daycare center most recently in a summer camp. And the, uh, the Strucker Hall was built in 1940, 1941, thereabouts, which is a, actually a four-story structure, counting the basement, et cetera. Uh, Tabor's now merged into Wood Services. Uh, Tabor is, uh, rem has removed their entire administrative presence uh, to w either Woods or to their headquarters down in Philadelphia. And they uh, have just caseworkers there, and they're all operating currently out of uh, Strucker Hall. Uh, we were asked about two years ago whether we had any interest in purchasing it, and yes, we did. But at that point in time, Tabor wanted to stay there uh, in full complement. They wanted to continue with their administrative staff. They wanted to continue with the daycare center, uh, the summer camp, et cetera. We did not express any interest, and as this board is probably thoroughly familiar with, another party came in and came in here with some ideas and plans. Our planning is dissimilar, but only similar in that it represents doing it in residential. I am very enthused about the possibility of an adaptive reuse for the three, not all five, just three of the buildings that are there. The uh, administration building, which we call the mansion, the original Frex mansion. Strecker, which is the big four-story, three-story uh, stone-faced stone building. It's all uh, steel and concrete. It literally has very few supporting columns anywhere in it, inside it, so it would be very easily to repurpose the building. Uh, Chris has p pictures of any of this that anybody wants to, to look at or have passed around. Um, the um, Miller Hagen, which was the carriage house, literally built as a carriage house back in the 1886 era, has been used as the day camp, as a daycare center, et cetera. All of that's closed now. So when we found that out, we went, uh, Tabor came back to us and we sat down and talked with them we about, I don't know, what, December, Chris, somewhere around there, we entered into an agreement. 
What we'd like to do, and I'd like to sort of turn this over to a combination of Chris and uh, Chris Burkett and uh, Doug at this point. What we'd like to do would be to take the three buildings and turn them into somewhere in the neighborhood of a total of 10 units on a condominium basis. The main mansion house would be divided into two, no more than two, and I don't know yet whether that'd be vertically or horizontally. The um, Strucker building would probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of six units. Again, not set out at this moment. And the uh, Miller Hagen Hall would probably be two, maybe three units, somewhere in that arena. You can't make it work on its own at that point. What I don't think we have in Doylestown at this point, or anywhere around here, and I came before a board of supervisors in the early 1970s, and we did Westwick. Came back in the 80s, and we did Teversall out on Lower State Road. And when we did, when Bob McCoach and I did Teversall, we didn't think through what the hell happens when you get older. <laughs> and you don't want to go upstairs any longer. You want all your living that you can have on one single floor. And I'm getting close to that stage in life. Uh, there is no place around here you can do that. Uh, and what, are, what are you smiling at, Barbara? <laughs> close. <laughs> um, the word close. Huh? The word close. close. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not there yet. But the long and the short is that we would love to be able to try to provide a limited number of units um, that would be on the high end, that all your living would be on one floor. But unlike uh, Teversall, there would be no step down anywhere unless you wanted it. There'd be room for an elevator, which we never thought about in Teversall. A couple of people put elevators in Teversall and turn around and one of them's ripped them out. The one that's in there now that I know of is very, very small, uh, carries one person at a time, uh, and have everything be on a good high end. Uh, and we tried to do this, and this is where I think I'll now turn it over to Doug and Chris. Which I, I, my instructions, our instructions to these gentlemen were, let's save these woodlands because they're beautiful beech trees back in there that we don't want to see disappear. And let's try to make it as interesting as we can. I gave them copies of the B-15 use that is in the ordinance that is applicable only to the R-1 and the R-1A districts and said, let's see what we can do. So let me turn it over to them for a few minutes and ask them to just quickly explain, if I haven't done it already, exactly what we're talking about and what, they, what efforts they went to to try to put this together and see whether we could, uh, whether there's any interest on the Board of Supervisors in having us proceed. You may thoroughly know we met with the administrative staff some number of months ago. We also met with the Planning Commission, and the Planning Commission, although not all members were present, their recommendation was that we proceed to the Board of Supervisors to see whether there would be interest. So let me turn it over for a minute. Good afternoon. Uh, as Chris mentioned, my name is Chris Burkett. I'm with Gilmore & Associates. I'm oh, sorry, your last name? Uh, Burkett, B-U-R-K-E-T-T. Thank you. And as Chris mentioned, um, he brought this site to our attention, Bernardin's office and, and my office's attention some months ago. Um, this is a site that I know you all are familiar with. It's gone through a lot of iterations here recently. Gilmore has a long association with this site going back to the early 2000s. Um, and as he mentioned, there, the two primary attributes of this site are the historical buildings and the mature uh, Oak Beach Association wooded area that's back in the central part of this site. And we took a study of it and looked at, uh, we had seen some of the studies that had been done previously for residential and residential and commercial. And although it is zoned commercial, uh, the site kind of feels like it wants to be residential because commercial footprints uh, typically in the 15,000 to 25,000 square feet would really uh, create a lot of difficulties on the site because of the woodlands and because of the topography. Um, the, the site already has a pretty good access. Uh, on this side of the site, the, the present access would serve as the future access as well. There's very good sight distance over there, uh, it's, and it's currently used uh, to, to access the parking lot. Uh, we would like to create a new access directly across from the Commerce Center. We would use the existing signalized intersection, um, and we would put in a new access uh, taking whatever requirements from PennDOT that we were faced with. Um, 
and that we would also try to preserve the view shed that comes into the site on either side of 611. Uh, so taking all of those things together and looking at how we might uh, structure a road to service residential lots, we elected to run a very curvilinear road around the project and runs right inside these contours so that we would minimize the amount of grading that would be necessary for both the roadway and the housing units that go around the roadway. Uh, and we think that this creates a pretty nice um, so, sort of roadside view of the buildings. Um, the actual footprints were developed by the architect. I'll let him go into the, to the ideas behind that in a, in a few minutes. Uh, but the, the central idea here is to uh, preserve the wooded area that's in the backs of these properties. Uh, now, there is some clearing proposed by this site. Uh, the site plan, but it is very limited. The primary large oaks and beaches that are in the upper part of the site would be retained. Um, we think that's a great idea. It's, it's, it makes a lot of sense from a marketing standpoint. It makes a great, great idea from an environmental standpoint. We also know that the soils in this area are very conducive to infiltration. Uh, we did also did the work across the street. They are very similar soils. And we think it's going to be very conducive to infiltration. We'd also like to look at things like uh, providing permeable paving in the driveways so that we also minimize runoff. Um, I, I, I hate to interrupt because yes, sir. I, I know what it takes to put on a presentation. I've, I've done a few of my time. And I, I, just, I just feel like there's this elephant in the room that we're not talking about. This, this is that the zoning, you mean? Well, yeah, isn't that the... Isn't that the first topic, that the zoning is an issue? I don't want you to go all the way down the road, and we haven't even talked about zoning. As you know, you mentioned, Mr. Shandor mentioned, we had previous meetings with this with other people, and he knows the comprehensive plan better than probably we do. I think that's the issue. That's, that's what's germane to this subject before you take us down the road. I, I mean, I appreciate the work and effort, but... Don't you think that's the first issue? It is. I'm, I'm, we just wanted to to set the place as Take the microphone. First. It's really important what yeah, you're you saying. Yeah, you got it. I'm sorry. They want it, the world wants to hear we, you. We just wanted to set the pace before you're 100% correct. If this board, if the, if the zoning were there, we wouldn't be here because water's here, sewer's here. What we're proposing is in general in conformance. But the zoning is not there. It is zoned C3, as the parcel across the street is now and was when we bought it. In order to do this, the township would have to be willing to consider rezoning from C1, C3 to R1, not R1A, R1. The remaining lands around the back of the Tabor property are zoned R1. So this would not be spot zoning. That's the biggest hurdle. The second hurdle is that the B-15 use, while we can comply with it in most all instances, requires that units be attached. Now, there's a very loose definition of what attached means. In fact, there's probably no real definition, Jeff, in terms of what attached means. But we are showing on here there is. detached. We would, we would challenge that one. That okay. Very well, good draftsman here that would but, challenge. All right. And, that, and, that, and Judy, that may, that may very well be. But in order to do this and in order to be able to sell these units at a kind of price point we're talking about, we would be requesting to be able to do deta detached, single family, probably all on a condo regime, but that's neither here nor there at this moment. How many are you talking? There would be a maximum of 20 new units in addition to 10 in the existing buildings for a total maximum of 30. And if you look at the R1, is the, C, the B15 use, it provides for a maximum of two units per acre uh, in the R1 area. And that would probably be a few more than this, not many more, two to four more. But this, this property won't support any more than what's shown on there and may not, subject to getting the floor plans with the Bernardin uh, office the way we want, because the floor plans have to drive this. You can put all the units you want on here, all that you would permit, but if the floor plans aren't right, this is not going to sell. Well, it goes back again to my point. You, you know that this board... Um, was not in favor of changing the zoning to the previous um, yes. offer. Yep. And even though the land may cry out 
for residential i'm not hearing the cry on this side so do you have empirical data do you have i mean do you have something to convince us that we should change what we ruled last year to make it residential i don't believe that what we're talking about bears any resemblance to what the former applicant was talking about changing the zoning from c to r well that that is correct that's that's the one change you're 100 correct about it the biggest concern that we have in terms of being able to reutilize everything is that the best and maybe the only utilization for an adaptive reuse of these three buildings and one of them's historic it has to be protected the rest of them aren't but they ought to be protected is as a residential use you not i think after 35 years of doing offices maybe almost 40 years of doing offices we have a fairly good idea of what the market is for offices I would, at this point, no more come to you with a plan for another 50, 60, or 70,000 square foot building on this property than fly to the moon. I don't and, think the market's there for it. And, and, and we didn't rule on those buildings because they weren't part of the previous. That's so that, I understand you separating that. It's the other 15 homes or whatever you have up there. So that, that's where you're... you're, you're, you're I'm having trouble following you following your argument. If you want to talk about just those three changing and doing the B-15s, and et cetera, that's one issue. If you're talking about changing the zoning for the entire property, I think that's a, I think you should address that, too. Well, I am addressing that. Okay. Well, what's, what, why, why should we change our ruling from last year for those 15 Wait, homes? This is a different, this is a different project. Yeah. It's a different, I, serves a different population. I, I, it's a home. You heard home. that, right? A home's a home. Okay. I, I mean, well, I'm, I'm, help, I'm, me, I'm, help me understand, too, because I mean, yes, you, you had mentioned it a couple times that these are high-end. Mm -hmm. Describe. Well, a price point? Describe high-end to me. Uh, I would, uh, we would strive like the devil to keep the units that are within the adaptive reuse buildings at prices 900 or below. If you're familiar with the Enclave, which is a development that is almost complete at the intersection of Clinton and Union Streets in mm -hmm. the borough, Brand new construction started at 600. Last offerings at seven and a quarter, seven and a half thereabouts. Fully sold out, to my understanding. Penthouses on two of the buildings, two each. Each of the two penthouses were bought by single buyers, combined together, and finished off on a very high end basis. The market is clearly there. Now, this is not downtown Doylestown Borough and the walkability that a lot of people strive for, and we do understand that. But what, in answer to your question, sir, what it is not is it's not just chopping up a piece of land and getting a bunch of single-family lots and selling them with, you know, I won't pick on any builders, but to whomever, um, as just plain, everyday, standard residences. What we would want to do here is try to make each one of the exteriors of these homes fit in with and be in conformance with the buildings that are there. As Chris pointed out, we're not talking about putting any residences in front of the existing dwellings. In fact, some of the trees that are in there now, which are old and beat up, would come down so that as you drove back and forth, you would get, as Chris pointed out, a view shed of the existing buildings up there. They are fascinating if you go through them. How many, what's the acres that you're talking about building these 20 new units on? What's the expanse there? How many acres are you putting them on? Almost 19 acres. 19 acres. Well, that's the total property is almost yeah, 19. I'm talking about what's your building envelope? How many acres is, are the 20, 20 houses going on? Well, how much of the Including the other three buildings. How much of the area, we don't, hey, you got a good question I don't have the answer to, but the, the, the woods area that's being, would propose to be retained is? That's just about four acres of the property. Of the property. Four, four so you're putting 20 units plus another 10 on 10 acres? 15 acres? Is that, am I got that right? 14 acres? Net, 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 yeah, probably. It's probably pretty close to that. Yeah. That's quite, a, quite, yeah, that's that's quite intense. What? Just saying. Well, yeah, but if I you look said. at your B-15 use, your B-15 your B fifteen use apply. does provide for the smallest lot to be. That would be the 10 units, not the additional 20. Uh, right? no, 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 no. Not as I, to help me out, Judy, not as I understand the B-15 use. Which doesn't uh, apply here. We'd have to. Well, first, we'd have to make it 
Pardon? It's not permitted in the C-3. We understand that. It also doesn't permit single-family, so it's sort of an academic discussion. Yes. It's smaller lots because it's only attached. No, and I understand that overall. I mean, it's not the same. You know, that's apples and oranges. But that's all right. I just wanted to know what the building envelope was for those 20 units. And that includes, like, 14 acres, including the other three properties, buildings. Right, and that would be about 22 percent coverage where 40 would be permitted. Well, we haven't even gotten there yet. Well, I mean, if you're starting to talk about the intensity of the use is where I get you going to. Well, okay. Not quite, but okay. Thank you. Thank you. In looking at it, the part of it that gets my enthusiasm, our enthusiasm, is the adaptive reuse of the three buildings. And they're not going to be inexpensive to work with. In fact, the per square foot cost of renovating them and getting them ready to deliver to somebody will probably exceed the cost of a new house. But you can't just do those. And the question is, okay, do you do that and do you put some offices on the rest of it, which essentially was in reverse the proposition that was in here before, because in the early stages of that, wasn't Tabor going to keep either two or all three of the buildings? I don't know. I never attended any of the meetings. I don't remember. Okay. It was residential. Well, I think there was that Tabor was going to remain in the carriage house and one of the other buildings, is my recollection. Right. Well, here Tabor's out. It would be the only way that we had any interest. Tabor has negotiated with us that, assuming we do close on this, they get to stay in one of the buildings for up to a year. While you work on the rest of the property? Well, we have to go through planning and everything, so it was an easy thing to say. It's easier for our insurance and everything else to have it occupied. If there is no interest from the Board of Supervisors in seeing anything like this, that's one thing. Just another question, and this is your expertise, you know, when you look at the market, and I keep coming back to the high-end market. I mean, as you know, we've had two other developments, one off a short road, and they were high-end homes. Yes. And they're not selling all the lots. We had another one on Lower State that was high-end, and they changed the whole plan not to make them high-end. Yes. I'm familiar with that. So I get confused when you say we're going to make it high-end and there's a lot of market for it. So if you say the market's there, I hopefully can accept it, but at the same time, it's like I don't want 20 homes built and then they're not filled up either. Okay, well. So help me understand. Let me hit each of those in reverse. First of all, we'd be crazy to build any homes that weren't under agreement, not even a sample. I don't think you'd do that. Number two, I believe firmly, based on what happened at the Enclave and having talked with the Malloy office who handled all the sales there, that the adaptive reuse units in the existing buildings will, there's a ready market for those. Am I, can I look you in the face and say there's a market for 18 or 20 of these at a million and a quarter plus? I can't guarantee that. I know there's a market for four of them because I know four people who would like to have them because they can't find them anywhere else. So, yes, that is a risk. And would we even begin to think about starting construction without having a number of agreements in place? We don't do that. It's just like the Commerce Center. We had to have that like 50 or 60 percent pre-leased the first building before we were allowed to start it. I'm too late in my career to lose money. But that's, if it weren't for the adaptive reuse of these three buildings, we'd no more come in here on the issue of residential than fly to the moon. It's not right. I understand your C3. But, again, a new large office building like unto the Commerce Center or the Heritage Building down below us, it's not happening anymore. I mean, the Cross Keys office building has changed ownership, as you may know. It is getting leased up slowly. Prices that it's getting leased up at because it was bought at the right price aren't the kind of numbers that we're able to get at the Commerce Center. And if you can't get the kind of numbers we get at the Commerce Center, you cannot afford to build a new office building. Now, could you scatter a whole bunch of small office buildings on it over time? That's a possibility. But I go back again to the existing buildings and tell you honestly that I'd be scared to death 
of trying to make an adaptive reuse office wise out of the existing buildings except possibly the mansion building have you run this by the planning commission yes what did they say they they recommended and Stephanie you were there were you not mm -hmm. they recommended that we came to come see you they didn't fawn over it they didn't fall over it but they they, they like the idea I think is that a fair statement yeah. Stephanie? I would say but, but they were interested in that they felt that there were big concerns regarding the lack that this will take a big chunk of commercial out of our township that I think is the end result they're sort of the angst of it you know it may have sounded a little bit more appealing at the first presentation they're always willing to talk to people and about projects and pursue things and vet things out um, six ways to Sunday but I think at the end of the day they did express concern about losing a big chunk of commercial in the township and, were you there? and in, in the past on that property um, just to go full circle the Planning Commission um, because the comprehensive plan as you know says commercial and 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 they feel as you probably experienced that you can't keep changing your your comprehensive plan the things ebb and flow and and this is a, an ideal area for commercial we do need some mix of commercial in our township and to further say that I mean we've got office buildings DeLuca's building down here they just started another one so I so I say if you have some empirical data or something, uh, that, that's one thing, but uh, there, there's no interest, at least from me, to change the zoning. Well, and, and I hear you loud and clear. The, 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 the issue with the commercial is what can you build there? Um, if the issue overall has to do with the tax base because the commercial never produces any students in school, I would quickly take you back to Teversol, 58 units, and when the 58th unit was completed and everybody had moved in, there was one child, a 16-year-old girl, living in all of Teversol. I don't know that there are any children there today um, because I don't keep track of it. This would be aimed, it's not going to be age restricted if we did it, but it's going to be aimed at and in all probability peopled by folks who don't have children at home. Uh, it's it's that um, it, it's really not so much that residents residential units produce children. It's that commercial units produce income taxpayers, and that's the, that's where the money comes from. I mean that's what our concern is. And also we want we want to have a balance in what we offer in Doyle Sound Township. In addition to residents, we want to have um, industrial. We want to have commercial. I mean and retail. I mean that's what this community. We have to have a balance. Yep. Um, but anyway, I, we, we kind of take measure from the Planning Commission because they do this stuff. They, they talk to the planner and they know the comprehensive plan. And uh, we kind of follow the recommendation of the Planning Commission. And I don't know that we've heard a recommendation from the Planning Commission, but you're, you're saying that they would keep it commercial? I'm saying in the last, no. when the previous developer came in last year, the Planning Commission, as I already expressed, didn't want to change the comp plan, didn't want to change commercial to residential because of the ebb and flow of society. Just as you've mentioned, things changed quite. So sure the do. same thing here. So they were, and, and then this board acceded to that, and we didn't change with the previous developer for that reason. And that's why I kept asking you, is there anything else you've got new to bring that we can look, take a look at? Well, what do you, th anybody else want to ask any questions or have an opinion on this? Sean, do you have? No questions, but I just, one comment. A little off topic, except that I, I, I appreciate the fact that they tried to work with the contours and what you had there and to maintain the beach forest in the back. I mean, any plants, whether you come back with something right. that doesn't require changes or whether this proceeds or whether someone else, I think that's commendable that they can right. try to work with what's there. Yeah. But well, Sean, we have an obligation under the ordinance to maintain a certain part of the woods. Mm -hmm. But I've walked that woods like a number of times, and my instructions to Chris were, please, it, yeah, let's not that. screw with the beautiful right. trees that are there if we can avoid it. Does anybody out there have any questions or comments? I have a, I have a question. I have a Mr. Sussingu? Yes, I am. Uh, Chris Sussingu. Uh, just hearing pros and cons of, of you and, and the board, if, if we don't do anything with the property as it stands and it goes commercial, do they demolish those buildings? It depends on the plan that would come. 
All right. It depends. Let me, okay. let me interrupt and He's tell you. He's creative. The, there are other creative people out yeah, there, I mean, too, I'd be sure. great to have. I mean, uh, I understand tax base and monies, and it saves me, you know, money out of my pocket from commercial and being a resident. But the historic value of the buildings. Now, those other buildings that you spoke about, the ones that are two across the street, okay, are they occupied enough to bring in revenue? I mean, are we going to build another industrial, you know, another commercial building when the two buildings or three buildings across the way aren't even full? Well, let me let me answer that. Yeah. The, the two buildings that we have across the way, we built them, we still own them. Uh -huh. They are fully occupied at this moment. Okay. Do we have tenants who are thinking about leaving because they need to get bigger and we can't take care of them? Answer, yes. Uh -huh. So could we have vacancies? Yes. Have rent structures changed over the last six or seven years? No. Um, if you entered into a lease with a tenant, the tenant pays increased rents every year, and then when you go renegotiate with them five years later, they want to go right back to the original rents from five years ago. Right. So that's where we are. I believe there are a couple of vacancies in the uh, in the Heritage Building, uh, but uh, the answer is, I can't lie to you, the answer is the buildings are making money, and as long as interest rates don't go through the roof, meaning we have to pay more for a mortgage note, Mm -hmm. uh, that will not be a problem. Okay. Uh, and as far as demolishing the buildings go, uh, the mansion is on the National Historic Register. It, it's just not something you'd want to take down. Not, and the other two buildings are beautiful. They're just, uh, but I'm having trouble envisioning, we are having trouble envisioning how to use them in other than a residential manner. Okay. Right. That's just, our issue. Thank you. I just had concerns of the fact that it's like if we had other buildings that are sitting there partially occupied, yeah. and we have another one, third one, fourth one sitting there, it's, it's not If that were the case, no lender would lend us the money to build a building. <laughs> That's right. Okay. No lender. All right. I think it's Thank a, you. My comment is I think it's good idea to put a couple of homes in there. How many of what type? I guess it would just be one floor ranches or something. One floor ranches. Yeah. I don't think I mean, he would call them one floor ranches. Floor ranches. <laughs> maybe maybe one floor rooms. maybe, but I'm not going to call them a ranch here. <laughs> so, so he's he's furniture. talking elevators. I think it'd be, I understand where you're coming from, it's like everything on one floor. But I think it's a nice property. It's got a lot of history in it and yeah. doing what you're playing. I like it. Unfortunately, if it does cost me the, some more money, then, you know, instead of a commercial business or something like that, then it's like... like Do you live nearby, sir? We live right down the road. Okay. So we're, we're right up back here, so... But okay. I'm, I'm good for homes than it would be if it was investor and commercial. Anybody else have any comment they wish to make? Okay. I'm, we'll ponder this, right? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, my, my take is on it. When going through this, and I went back and looked at the comprehensive plan, and, and my gut is telling me stick with why we put it as commercial in the comprehensive plan. That intuitive to me is where, where it should stick as commercial. I, you know my opinion. So. <laughs> yep. Sean, what do you think? Well, I think it was pointed out by a couple members of the board that, you know, things change. Although we don't look to, we're not looking to redo the comprehensive plan. I mean, demands change and the community changes, but whether or not it substantiates you know, a change from commercial residential. I don't know if it's yeah. been I, I like the concept. I think it's uh, great. I don't yeah. know though that the concept it warrants the change. However, I I don't want to I don't want to say no right now. I want to think can, about it. Can I can I just think can I think about it? Yeah, I mean yeah. yeah I mean, a, you can, a you can think about it, and can I throw another yeah. idea into the mix, which is not something that I thought about until recently, and I'm being very honest with you. Um, while we would love to do this approach, I'm living down below Doylestown. And someday in the not too distant yeah, future. Yeah, you live in Buckingham, don't you? Uh, well, That's part of our nice farm is in Buckingham. Oh, okay. Most of it's in Upper Makefield. So yes, we're. You got to go to the Pineville Tavern first, and then you're <laughs> right there. Um, Fair enough. Uh, but at some point, my wife and I, when we, when George Donovan designed our house for us, we didn't think about the need for an elevator at all. Hmm. And this lady's got not one, not two, but three new knees over a period of time. And there's going to be a time when she's going to come to me and say, I don't want to go upstairs anymore. Well, where the hell are we going to sleep in the living room? I don't know. So the answer is we'll move, and, I, and I'm you not bought one. You're buying one of your I, houses? I, I, you you bet I will. <laughs> I'm a guy who's always had backstops for my backstops. So the answer is yes. Fair I, enough. I, Mr. I certainly Shandor, will. If, if just to end it, I, I, I'll make my comment just for myself. Yep. Those three buildings, and I was, I mean, a gorgeous staircase in, in that. Isn't that neat? I mean, it's, they're unbelievably, so I, I, I agree with Mr. Susan. But 
I think I'm amenable to listening to doing something with those three buildings. And if it necessitates an apartment or whatever you want to call it, it's the other portion that I have concern with. So okay. take that for what it's worth. Well, you're, 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 you're hitting the point that I was going to throw out. And I don't know how this would work economically. We'd have to think it through. But would this board, I'm now hearing from one supervisor, would this board consider the possibility of allowing a B-15 use, changing a portion of the land to, you'd have to change it, right, Jeff, to R-1, and have the, the improved portion of it be changed to R1 with the understanding, obviously, that we would be doing the adaptive reuse on the three buildings and utilize the remainder of the land. Your, your commercial ordinance, when you speak the word commercial, it's very limited commercial, and for good reason. It's, there, there's no retail allowed other than a bank branch, and you can't even call that retail, and banks aren't building branches any longer. Um, you're, you'd be talking about offices. That would be the only thing that would go in there, period. Is that something that so you're talking mixed use? Yeah. Yes, sir. I think it's uh, actually it's leaving. One or the other. You know, I just don't see it. Uh, I'm not. I think it's one or the other. It's either commercial or it's residential, not both. I mean, Judy, what do you think? Take the mic. What do you think, Judy? Come on, Judy, help me out. Tell me what you think. <laughs> don't help him out. Just give us your thoughts. She works for us, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, if the question is commercial or residential, unless we have a mixed use permitted in which you could do some adaptive reuse of the existing buildings for residential in conjunction with the mixed use on the whole site. I don't see it working otherwise. I don't see you zoning a portion of the site into a residential district to permit the B-15 in it and leave the rest in the commercial. I think it's one or the other. But if it stayed in a commercial district, there's, there's the potential to create a mixed use wherein you could have adaptive reuse of existing structures for residential with some other non-residential use. When we say commercial, I mean, it's not just office permitted on here. There are other types of things, too. There's nursing home. There's, well, medical office is a type I'm of not, office. I'm not old enough to go to nursing home yet, well, not so don't, you. don't push me there yet. You'll never be there, Chris. <laughs> but there, there are other options we could look at and possibly even maybe see what else could be put into it. And, and I'm just thinking now because it's an interesting concept to think about the adaptive reuse of those buildings. And if, in fact, they can only be used for residential, it's something to think about. I'm not sure they can only be used for residential, though. We do have some adaptive <coughs> reuse of historic structures in our ordinance already, some other things that could happen in there. Um, there's a B&B, &B, there's a museum, there's a couple other uses permitted. Okay. Well, all right, so you gave us some things to think about. I don't, you're not dead in the water, let's put it that way. Pardon? You're not dead. You're not no. dead. But, but I know when I'm dead, so yeah. I'm, I'm figuring right. I'm not, we'll I'm not anywhere there at this moment. How do, we, how do we go about thinking about it? You folks want to talk amongst yourselves with Judy and one on that, and then? I think, I, think the, I think maybe, Rick, if you want to take a, take a conversation to the Planning Commission and see what they think about these. I, and that's certainly, we'd like to hear your creativity first, and, and by you know, getting with your other consultants. Come back to the Planning Commission, and, and they're, I mean, that's a good group. We, we, we'll give you some ideas from there. Well, I certainly got some long-term people on that Planning we Commission. We certainly do. We're very Absolutely. Blessed in this town. But, but it, my thought process, again, and, and I disagree with Judy a little bit, I, I, I hear the other uses that the buildings could be put to, and frankly, I don't, I don't see those as being economically feasible. I've looked at them. Um, I, I think in order to do it and to be able to come out of it alive with your skin, you've got to do it residentially, and you've got to be able to sell them, not lease them, sell them. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Thank you. We've done a structural examination of all three buildings, and with some effort to the to the, well, the, the Strucker building is as sound as it comes. The, what kind of service are there? Utilities there? Uh, no, we, we'd have to bring water and sewer there. Believe it or not, that place now operates off of an in-ground well that pumps water up to a 100-year-old cistern on the top of the hill Get out. in the woods, and then the water flows down and pressurizes in the three buildings. Wow. Septic systems. How many of them, Chris? Three, septic three septic systems used to provide for all of the kids that were there. Now, there haven't been kids there since the late 1970s. But the place is still in the dark ages, <laughs> but it was built very well. So you'd have to do on-site? 
everything. Oh, no, we got, oh, we've already, we, when we built the Commerce Center, Barbara, we brought water from Kutz to the site. And we brought sewer yeah, from just across uh, from his current property. And I've already met with Dick uh, previously. Oh, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we've got water, water and sewer underground. capability and capacity okay. are all there oh, at reasonable prices. Mm -hmm. all right. So this is a developable, usable site, and we need to figure out. And you know what? I'd be very pleased to work with the Planning Commission to try to figure out. Well, you heard it from the liaison. The best best way to do it. Let's Go do it. Back Put and your take a look at it again. It sounds like you're not going to get a rezoning from the... Resign or rezone? Rezone. Rezoning. <laughs> However, I think there is some sentiment to find a way to make the appropriate after reuse of the old buildings. Right. Yeah, if there is not, and that's very good, Jeff, if there is not, please tell me now because we'll just bow out of the agreement. I, I don't want to mow what? those buildings down. If there's not what? If there's no sentiment to allowing an adaptive reuse that is economically feasible for those three buildings. There are two other buildings you, they can go you away. You said you do what? Pardon? You said you do what if there's... He's not interested. We're not interested in proceeding. I would I oh. would uh, back out of the agreement altogether okay. to the extent that there is no... The whole reason we entered into it, the whole reason we didn't enter into it back two years ago was because Tabor wanted to stay and did not want to part with those buildings. The whole reason that we did do it was because the buildings were available. Gotcha. All right? So we need some help from your end to work our way through this. Well... Okay. No. Okay. Well, through the planning see. commission, you come up with. We'll see. Thank you. All right. Thanks for your time. Okay. Thank You're you. welcome. Sorry to take so much of it. Good evening. Sure. It was worth it. If it was 10 o'clock tonight, you'd get less time. <laughs> uh, I, I love the fact that it's only 520. All right. Next uh, item on the agenda are announcements. We're going to next meet on <laughs> Tuesday, March 21st at 7 p.m. Bicentennial Committee. Did you hear that, Chris? We're celebrating our bicentennial in 2018. I, I know. Aware. Okay, so <laughs> be ready. What, what's interesting, excuse me for taking the time, what's interesting is I get a notice from the development director at Tabor the other day. They're having a big shindig and they want to know whether we want to sponsor part of it. That's where they're having the shindig. Aldi Mansion. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, we didn't have a choice. <laughs> First at four. Daylight saving time begins March 12th. Um, turn your clocks ahead. Change the batteries and your smoke detectors. Washington, D.C. Cherry Blossom trip on April 1st is $50 a person. You can sign up by going to doylestownrec.com. The Environmental Advisory Council is selling magnets, $5 each. They're very pretty. Buy one. Movie and ski tickets, a real deal here at the Doylestown Township Administrative Offices. The prices are available at the uh, front desk. And today is the deadline for nominating someone for the Unsung Hero Award. So please, you have time to email us at um, uh, blions at dawstownpa.org. How's that? Thank you very much. We are adjourned. Good night, everyone. Thank you for coming. We do have documents to be signed. Oh, we want to take a picture.